Bobby Chalmers here for Race Pro Weekly, sitting here with Dean Reynolds, the series director for the Super Dirt Car Series. Dean, thanks for sitting down with me. Mm -hmm. uh, you just renounced the 2023 schedule. Talk about the fact that you're going back to Canada. I mean, you haven't done it for four years. I talked to mm -hmm. Matt Shepard, I talked to Williamson, and they're both excited about going. Yeah. Talking yeah. about the great uh, fan bases and whatnot. Yeah. Talk about the series going back. Well, and, and you know, Canada having uh, dirt car sanctioned tracks in Drummondville and, and Brockville. Canada is important. It, it always is. Now, I know the border, you know, sometimes can be a little bit of a hassle and stuff like that. But, you know, I've done it forever with ESS and, and everything. But Canada is very important because we had, you know, uh, Paul St. Sever run the tour last year. And now looks like we're going to have two or three maybe on the tour this year. There's a lot of good talent, a lot of good drivers up there, a lot of good tracks, but the fans. Yep. The fans just go nuts for Super Dirt Car Series, even when we brought the sprints up there. Uh, they really enjoy seeing the Americans come up, challenge the locals, and, uh, you know, we're excited. Now, we do doing all three races right in one swing, yep. so the American teams will go across the border once, and we get two races in a Drummond and a race in a Brockville, come on back, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun, and I think... It's, you know, there's no restrictions on the border anymore. Get your passport, get your hands license, and do like you did before. And it's time. It's time to go back. Let's go racing. Now, like you were just talking about, you got Paul's coming off the tour, but, like, you had Matthew Desjardins, mm -hmm. who won down there in World Finals. Yeah. Last year you had Alex Jankowski that won. Talk about the youth movement and some of the young yes. guns that are coming up because – a big win like that. I mean, Demetrius Drellos had yep. really good runs the last couple of years down in Charlotte. Yep. Talk about what having the young drivers mean to compete against yes. the Matt Shepherds and the Billy Deckers and stuff. Talk about that. Well, and that's when when I came in in 2019. That was the biggest thing I heard. I heard it a lot, and I heard it even before the job. Is the Super Dirt Car Series got stale? There's no influx of new talent. And so I went to work on, on scheduling, on purses, point funds, and stuff to entice the younger generation to say, hey, this is what I want to do, but they also got to be able to afford to do that. And first it was Demetrius Strelos and Jack Lehner, yep. Yep. you know, bringing them in. Then we, uh, you know, then we brought in, uh, not necessarily young guys, but new blood, Anthony Perego, Mark Johnson. Uh, you know, it, it's now you got yeah, Alex Jankowski ran last year. Yep. Alex Payne's looking to maybe do the tour. Good. Uh, Felix Waugh from Quebec is looking to do the tour. And that's stuff the tour hasn't had in a while. You know, even when we had Timmy Sears yep. is a new guy and a younger guy. Uh, I'm forgetting some people. I mean, <laughs> even when Chris Heil did it. Yep. You know, and he was going to do it this year, but his business got busy. But I wanted an influx of new talent to come in to challenge the mats, the, the other mats, the Peter Britton, the Jimmy Phelps. You know, Max McLaughlin's back. Yep. And uh, that's where we tried to build the Super Dirt Car Series. We finished last year with 16 cars. Started with 18, finished with 16. So we're getting it to where, you know, I, I think it's the strongest tour out there. And we want to entertain fans with the best drivers. And that's, we're going to even work hard to do it again this year. Now, if anybody is going to be looking at the schedule and they can check it out on Race Pro on Super Dirt Car Series mm -hmm. website, there are a lot of mainstay tracks. There's no new tracks, but there's a lot of mainstay yep. tracks. Talk about the, 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 the going to the tracks that, that have good car counts and, and are in good territories. I mean, you yes. talk about going yeah. down to the southern states in Pennsylvania and whatnot. Now we're back in Canada. you got the central New York tracks. Talk about having the mixture of different tracks but the solid different yeah. tracks. Well, and it's a balance. That, you know, when you do the schedule, it's a balance. I mean, you get people who say, how come three races at Wheatsport? Um, you know, and then uh, you know, two Atlanta ledges. But that is the nucleus of the tour. Most of the drivers are upstate in central New York. Drivers that are going to follow it, but then you got to sprinkle in your mix. So we want to go down south, and and entice a, a guy like Alex Jankowski or Mike Guler um, that want to do the tour. So we go down south for two or three races, and now hopefully Atomic can get in this year with the weather, because we want to see what we can do outside the nucleus. Mm -hmm. PA is outside the nucleus as far as the drivers, but not really fans. There's still big block quote modified fans, PA and Jersey. Right. But now we're going to Southern Ohio. I really want to see what our crowds that we can get outside of upstate New York. It's going to be important. We get good crowds in Charlotte. We get good crowds in Volusia. But we also run with the outlaws. Now it's time to see what the Super Dirt Car Series can do a little bit. So Charlie Vest uh, came to us last year. Uh, we booked a weekend in Atomic. Got snowed out. Weekend before it was 75 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> so, but he still had a good response from the fans. Are you going to bring them back? Are you going to bring them back? 
So we got moved back a week and later, and uh, we're going to go back for a two-day show. 10,000 to win, 12,000 to win. Last year, I, I didn't know what I was going to get for car count, but when I started talking to people, we had 42 cars wow. that were going to go to Atomic. That was more than I thought. So I think we'll have that support again this year, and uh, let's see. But the whole schedule's a balance. It, it's a it's a balance to not get too many races, not get too few races, but make it affordable for even uh, Jack Laner to stay on the tour, uh, Timmy Sears. Um, but, you know, it, it's just you got to keep that nucleus and balance of New York, but the sprinkling. Yep. As of right now, there's only one yep. Albany yeah. Saratoga date, and we've got a lot of people that have been contacting us talking about on our, our posts about there's only one date but there is that spot on the bottom saying that it could be determined we're trying to work out a date yes talk about albany saratoga or in um airborne and, and and what you want to try and do with them yeah lyle ran friday last year uh you know we had a little scheduling conflict in the for the midweek race that we had planned last year so we moved it to friday to get us off a date that was kind of close to it and lyle had a good friday and he kind of wants to do it again he, he was comfortable and he wanted to stay with friday but the the issue with friday is we have sanctioned tracks right. so what i got to do is go back to the sanctioned tracks and see if they're willing to do a non-points race or not to run modifieds because i might have a platinum driver that's going for weekly points at the track that's the reason why you don't see weekend events on super dirt car series because the nucleus of dirt cars the weekly racing well if you have series races on weekends these tracks are going to have to go non-points or whatever. And then also their stars are actually going to have to leave for that night. So with the Friday night date, I got to go to three or four tracks to get permission or find ways to, to help them out where we can make sure that the one or two cars are going to lose. We'll come to Albany because they're a signed contracted driver, but they still have a good show on their Friday night. And then Mike Parati has really built up Airborne in the last couple of years to where I think he's ready to have the big blocks back. He had them back last year for a special show. I had a good crowd, but now he wants a series race and see how the series race would work out. I think it's ready, and we both talked. We won't do it unless we didn't think it's ready. And what we want to do is we want to go back to back with Airborne in Albany for the teams and for the fans to make a mini vacation out of it. Recently, there was an announcement from Airborne that they're going to do a part-time 358 deal. Yeah. How important is getting a track like Airborne into the 358 fold. you got Glen Ridge and whatnot to yeah. go along with a lot of really great tracks that run the 358s weekly. Even on a part-time schedule, how good is it to have a track like Airborne back into the 358 fold? Well, it's big for us out east. Uh, you know, with Glen Ridge and Airborne, I've always want the influx of stars to come up from the pro stocks and the sportsmen, come up from the crate divisions. The 358s are next stepping stone. But some areas, though, it goes from crate to big block. And sometimes that might be a, a, too much of a jump for some people, and they stay crate or they'll do something else. 358s now with Airborne running five or six shows and Glen Ridge running, you can see actually some of the crate guys now already got 358s and moving up. Right. So you always want that bridge. You got, we got the three-division bridge, Pro Stock Sportsman to 358 to eventually Big Block and then maybe down the road Super Dirt Car Series. And that's the stepping stone that you want to do, you know, the totem pole, as you will. And that's what's big. The East is really big because it's very heavy in crate divisions. Very heavy. Right. It's the biggest in New York State is out East. But we want to give them something to move up to, something a goal, something to try. Right. And uh, by Airborne and Glen Ridge uh, helping out. And we sanctioned Lebanon Valley 358s last year to maybe yep. get that little bit of progression as well. So it's important, and I'm excited to see what we can do. Glen Ridge does want to do a 358 series race, so that's going to be cool. And uh, we'll see uh, you know, if we can get that progression going. We're moving to the, the sportsman division. You and I talked earlier. When I ran, it was one unified yeah. series. Over the last 10, 15 years, you've done regions. Is that the benefit to the class and helping to build the class? Or is there ever any idea of a possibility of going back to something like that where it, it kind of just like the 358 tour in the big block tour where you're traveling all over yeah. the place i think with sportsmen uh the regions still need to stay in a way um it, yes there's a lot of them out there but how many can travel around and do 10 15 20 races right i don't know there's not a lot there's been a push from some drivers and some teams to get back to that and do that 
So in talking to Corey Reed, we sat down for hours and, and tried to discuss. I think what we're going to do this year is we're going to do a little bit of a hybrid. reason why we want to keep some of the region races, because not every track can do a championship tour race, or it might not be feasible to do a championship tour race, because Cody McPherson that lives out by Ranceville might not be able to go to Drummondville and follow the whole tour. Right. So me and Corey sat down, and we're thinking we're going to reduce the regions back to four. We're going to go north, central, east, and west. Maybe do four or five shows only at each of those regions. Okay. Do the same, home track bonus points, region bonus points. But then we're going to start the championship tour in August. Okay. Before it started at Malta last year, right. which, yep. which was great. We had 67 cars. Then we go to Fulton. Then we go to Dirt Week. And then we go to Brockville. Part of me is, is that really enough to decide a champion as well? <laughs> And then with some of these teams asking to have more of a unified tour because they want to travel around, Jessica Powers won. Right. Uh, the Buffs, Cody McPherson, they want to travel more. So we thought, let's do a hybrid. Let's keep the regions so tracks can still have series races where they might not be able to have a championship race, but then have more championship races where they run for a bigger purse because the championship race does have a bigger purse of 1500 to win or more, and, and then develop a champion that – came from the bonus points and ran 12 championship races. That's my goal is to see if we can get 12 okay. and uh, travel to some different areas where the sportsmen are popular. And now uh, let's see how that works. Now, the Unified works good for Pro Stocks, works good for 358s and, of course, Super Car Series. But sportsmen, because every track runs a sportsman. <laughs> you can't have 20 championship races in all corners of everywhere because – I, I still think it's too much for the guys to fall. You know how much it was back yep. then. I know. And fuel know. was 99 cents a gallon. I don't know if you're that old. but <laughs> you that old. Jeez. <laughs> but know. You know what I mean. I know what you're talking yeah. about. I know what you're so talking about. So I, I think that's where we're going to go this year and uh, and see how it works. A couple weeks ago, you had the ProSoc meeting during the Dirt Park Banquet weekend. There was a lot of talk about trying to change. You yeah. know, you got the difference between the leaf spring cars and the coil cars. Yeah. And the, the height of the rear deck and mm -hmm. things like that. How close are you to either saying this is where it's going to be, this is what we're doing, or are you planning on doing any changes? We're close. Uh, you know, okay. we're working on a package now. There's there's going to be some changes, and and you know we're not going to you know we're not going to cut big air. Which it, we need to get these cars down just a little bit, but we don't want to obsolete any cars. We don't want guys to cut up cars, so we're working on a package that keeps Lee Springs uh, uh, in the hunt. Uh, coil cars are going to be in the hunt, but they go around the track, not hiked up so high, you know, and, and make it to where they can get side by side. We've been working with uh, Fonda and Utica Roma as well. Um, we're going back and forth. Our goal is actually to have the same rule book. So, because Pro Stocks, there's only 100 of them out there. There's different rules for sportsmen, 358s, and modifieds all, all over. Right. There's plenty of them out there where PA can have a package and Jersey can have a package and stuff like that. Now, by working with Fonda and Utica Rome, hopefully uh, getting this package out, everyone knows this is it. Go get your cars. Let's go race. Go to any track and do what you need to do. We just need to what's called reel it back in. Right. Not that it spun out of control, but you could see it getting a little bit out there. And then there's dissension amongst the teams. There seems to be the coil clan, the leaf <laughs> clan. And, and and then when you have series races and the leaf clan is the only one that goes or the coil clan is the only one that goes, and then there's only 16 cars, you don't need that. And, and, and even on the other end, uh, there's a lot of money there, 16 cars. you know. And then with a track like Orange County or, or whatever wants to put on a special race, there's not a lot of cars. That's not good for the class. If you want the class to grow, we need to reel some of that in. Think we got something good with the rules and make it uniform, hopefully, with the with the other two tracks. And then let's just simply, let's just go race. Let's just go race. One last thing I got to ask. At the Northeast Racing Products Trade Show, Bert caused a lot of commotion. Yep. Some good. Some people were questioning it. Yep. But caused a lot of commotion with their new torsion bar rear seven. Yep. Where does that stand with dirt car as legal versus mm -hmm. not able to run? Because I know there's a lot of people that are that are not happy with running the coils and everything the way yeah. that it is, that this is a good option for them, especially with these cars that are coil-only chassis. Yeah. 
where do you guys stand with that that setup? Yeah, it, you know, the uh, because the coils have been so prominent over the last few years, people forgot about torsion bars. Well, torsion bars are still in the rule book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's still there. Yeah. It's just no one runs them. Except for, I think Billy Pouch Jr. is like the last <laughs> one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the torsion bar is legal. And the way Burt built it, it's legal. It's nothing, um, you know, hugely exotic, I guess. I, you know, I'm not a tech guy, but um, but it is legal. Mark Hitchcock's been on the phone with Burt talking about it and everything else. There is one aspect there that just a small piece of steel that's inside the area that technically is illegal. But it's, you know, but it sounds like it's not for performance, it's for strength. And if we need to adjust because something makes it safer, absolutely. Right. You know, before I guess the word was aluminum in the, in the area. And, uh, you know, that's something we've got to go over and look. But, oh, yeah, it's legal. I mean, torsion bar is illegal. The way he has it set up is the way it is in the rule book. And I think it's just him trying to find a way to, uh, you know, maybe bring those back. Uh, right. But it's, it is different than the four link. You know, the reason why we outlawed the four link was that was a completely different suspension. We already went from the torsion bars. Then the left-hand side panar bar came around. Right. Everyone had to spend a couple thousand dollars to move over to that. You know, it's called a lateral move. Well, now everyone's got it. By the way, Matt Shepard's still fast. Stuart Friesen's still fast. Matt Williams is still fast. Everyone spent a couple thousand dollars to go get their cars changed over. Still the same guys. Yep. So that's what was going to happen with the four-link. It wasn't that we hated this driver. We hated this chassis manufacturer. No, it's, it was going to go down the path of the four-link with the technology could become the chassis or suspension of choice because it is in late models. Right. And now everyone's spending a couple thousand dollars because they got to go get it to be fast because it's a little bit faster than the coils. Right. And guess what? After two years, everyone spent the money. Matt Shepard's still fast. Matt Williamson's still fast. Jimmy Phelps <laughs> still fast. It's called lateral moves. Yep. Racing, I love ingenuity in racing. I actually hate the word spec, but you know what? In this day and age, stay in the course and maybe stopping stuff before it develops is not necessarily the worst thing in the world to do. You know, it's just it's just the way today is. And if you're not going to stop spending, racing is always going to be spending. If you can curtail it a little bit and help out the 85% of the cars that are out there, because remember, yes, we're Super Dirt Car Series. But I have 800 members I got to think of. Yeah. That Saturday night sportsman guy at Brockville is just as important as anybody else. Yeah. And you got to think of them.